Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha, this is Jeeb's here, your old composer here at the Decomposer Lounge, dissecting your suggested tracks. I have had a lot of calls for this band. Once again, I apologize for those who are still subscribed that I haven't done Isis, and today I'm doing Ghost Key. Now, um, from some of the comments, I think, uh, from what I've read here, is that this band, uh, at some point or another, uh, uh, is, is kind of like within the same circle of of uh, bands that um, uh, the Tool Army uh, enjoy. Uh, but um, I look forward to listening to this. I want to thank you guys for a couple things. Number one, yesterday's video uh, that I put out about what's mainstream, with how, how do I know the difference in mainstream, um, and the, way, the tips you guys have been giving me and the stuff in those comments on that last video. Thank you so much. This is what I love about this channel. I'm learning. I am an old composer. Music is my life, but this journey in metal is nine months new. And, um, you know, because of the comments like I got for that video, uh, I'm learning so much and I want to thank you for it. All right, let's do this. Uh, like usual, you know the shtick. Any ads that run on this video doesn't monetize the channel. If you want to buy me a cup of coffee, check out the kind of headsets I have. Get um, Isis's, uh, is that Isis's, uh, Spotify or check out my Patreon. The link will be down below. All right, guys, let's do this. All right. So um, obviously not a um, um, typical structure of a song. Uh, so I could see by listening to this, I could see that if if I was right, if I did my homework right, that uh, folks that uh, really super dig uh, the Tool journey would rinse with this as well. A uh, couple really super cool things about this. Number one, the very opening. Um, in a sonic dynamic thing, kind of my engineer ears taken over first in this part of the breakdown, is that everything that opened up for that first, I'd say probably was eight bars, was everything was in mono. So you had your bass, there was a, you know, the drums were kind of in already at their a rhythm, um, uh, an arrangement had already started, but it was right up the pocket in the middle. So in your headset experience, nothing hard left, nothing hard wet, right. And I also noticed that there's a digital delay on the bass, that's what it sounds like, which is kind of cool. Um, and that, again, I only mentioned Tool because um, of what I think I read was correct, but then I can hear how there's some of the similarity um, there, at least just with the bass line, and, and, and that's it. Um, and then what ended up happening is, uh, then they go hard left, hard right when the guitars come in, the clean guitars. What I really enjoy about that is that they are two separate arrangements. So the guitars are coming in, this is the clean sound, and the guitars start coming in, it's two separate arrangements. And I like that about dynamics, I like that about, um, uh, f for the way I experience music, uh, I, I like 
that multi-layered kind of vibe, especially something that right now seems to be a little more instrumental than vocal. Um, but I really dig the ambiance setup of that. Even though the digital delay of the bass is down the middle, these two guitars come in, it's still kind of a, um, a spacey kind of, uh, I don't want to say ethereal kind of vibe to it, but I I'm going to say ethereal vibe. Then of course the, the power comes in, you got the growling that hits, I, 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 you know me, I don't listen to lyrics at, on my first time around. And I, the, the depth of that growl is really intense, but I like where it fits in the pocket. Then we swing right back into this instrumental again, and, uh, and it seems like the, the, the drum arrangement starts to pick up a little more. So uh, it looks like uh, this track's like eight and a half minutes. So we still have a ways to go, but I wanted to just stop and, and start bringing these points up. Okay, let me go back just a little bit. Here we go. <laughs> Through this chord change, um, listen to the bass. Uh, you know how I am about bass? Um, the super warm sound and round and stuff, but there's, there's this kind of anxiety arrangement on this side um, that's being held with the guitar. You know, it's, it's like an, um, you know, it's, it's an eighth note um, thing that's going on here. But it, uh, it's also the zip line tone so da, 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 that, that note right there, sorry. <laughs> that note actually has been consistent through the song. And you can hear how he's kind of peddling that note right there. But this side of the, that arrangement is anxiety. This one is kind of more like, so to me, it's a tug of war in the arrangement of like, you have this anxiety side here, you have this kind of ethereal here, but right in the middle is this really warm pocket of the bass. Listen to the, the lines he's choosing, uh, the notes that he's playing in his, in his arrangement. So once again, I'll say this every time because it's my show. <laughs> but the bass has uh, uh, an absolute unique ability, kind of like drums. Remember, I've, I may have mentioned this before in the past, where you kind of expect when drums come in with a fill, 
you know, at the end of a phrase or at the end of a measure or a bar as it turns around to another one, where you find a lot of times that bass players uh, write arrangements very similar to that. Not that it mimics what the drum is doing, but it's like this natural kind of turnaround. Uh, so they might be humming on, you know, just kind of uh, laying in on, you know, a chord or a pattern, but a lot of times you'll hear the 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 turnaround but it do da 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 you know very much like a fill uh, or it doesn't even have to be notes it could be boo, a gliss or some kind of noise or something like that um, but I like this drop in the chord that they did here in this section here and then the voice now I really had a chance to really kind of like uh, enjoy another part of the vocalist as hearing a different part of his instrument. So once again, I don't know what the lyrics are, but this just put me in kind of like, like I said, there's a tug of war of emotions, but I kind of was drawn into the bass. And the EQ on the drums is fantastic. It's just absolutely so cool. All right, let's go for a little more. Okay, time to rinse on the drums. Um, you know, when I was younger, that was like the third instrument that I learned to play, and but was the one that lasted with me a lifetime. What I learned when I was a drummer as a kid and through people I had experienced uh, through listening to albums and playing against them to having some, some teachers um, is the not so overlooked ability to do arrangements, but Sometimes it's, you know, unless you're listening for them, these really super subtle uh, parts of drum fills or, or performance, uh, a lot like ghost notes, ironically, um, ghost key. But in this case, one of the things uh, I noticed, first of all, I just said earlier about the engineering on the drums. What I love about that is the width of the ambience on the snare that gives us this left to right room kind of sound. You, 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 the dynamics of stereo listening, you hear that snare and the way the snare has got post effects. I'm sure a little bit of compression, but it has like a room reverb on it or, or a light plate reverb on it, while the rest of the kit is isolated and doesn't have a lot of that happening because what will end up happening is that if you do take a whole kit and put a plate on it, doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I've heard tracks that, that do that for, for for a depth reason, an ambient or ethereal kind of vibe. But if you notice, the toms are very, the they are all dry. And they're kind of, and in this track, I would have done the same thing because there's so much um, uh, arrangements that are going on uh, that have, you know, long tails on it, sustained, everything's sustained, nothing's muted, nothing's really short and stuff. So you don't want to muddy and, and, float, and flood that out. But, but what I love, uh, the fills he's doing are really super cool, but I love the subtle kind of um, uh, you know, so in other words, you hear the kick going and then the pop is the snare. You know, these little things that are happening in and out, all these little flavorful nuances and dynamics that the drummer's playing. Um, yay, I love so much. Okay, so I just wanted to, to bring that up. Here we go.
Sorry, I, I'll bring it back to that section that we just heard. I'll, I'll get back into it and give us some time. But I wanted to bring uh, two things up on that. There was that, that note, uh, because I don't know what, uh, what the size of the band is. Um, and if that's a, an overdub they decided to do, or there's actually a keyboard element to the band. But the weird little synth mono note that was just playing through that whole section had gave just kind of changed the arrangement a little bit into a daunting kind of a vibe. Uh, and also, uh, I want to go back to the bass really quick on this. Um, you know, there there seems to be that apparent pick use in the in the bass. Um, and if you listen to that passage and you go back again, um, he he also elevates his arrangement through this as well, which is nice. So there's multiple arrangements going on here. Um, and something else I want to bring up briefly too that I was thinking about when I was listening to this is going, wow, this is a very uniquely written track. You know, when people talk about songs that are beyond the radio play um, spectrum, three and a half minutes, maybe four at max, and we're into a track that's like eight minutes, and of course many, many bands that I've done here have really long tracks and stuff. Um, you know, and, and I know that, that I've heard on channels where they talk about, you know, um, they may mock a little bit about, wow, the song is like, this is so long. I said, well, I started thinking about, you know, as I'm multitasking in here, that, you know, my first experience, obviously, Bye Bye Miss American Pie, I <laughs> remember that song was way beyond radio, but uh, Pink Floyd, you know, was huge in doing tracks that were seemingly patterns that just went on forever and these subtle nuances and you know what there there is a point of reception for a lot of people of that stuff that just need to type they you tune into things and you just let it go and rinse and, it, and it's like keys that unlock spaces in your mind you know and of course if you're enhanced with something else like coffee uh, that makes it that much more fun. But what I love about what I'm hearing in this arrangement and you know an eight and a half minute song is that the repetitive nature of the arrangements with maybe a slight nuances and, and points of breathing is really, really nice because it's so ironic because I was listening to that and my mind did kind of unlock in, into another zone when I started thinking, yeah, this has got that Pink Floyd kind of thing that pulls from here and, it, and you know, it, and, it, and it allows you time to sit down and actually just chill and enjoy the track, you know, so, except when a guy like me is doing a ra reaction and blows it by stopping all the time. Man, did you, you know, here's something else that uh, Super Dig before I end this here. Um, those unique notes, weren't there, weren't there a couple notes in there that made you feel a little uncomfortable? Um, and, you know, they were, they're part of the, I don't know, they're, they're part of us, they're part of the scale, but in a dissonant kind of way. There was a few notes in there that you're, because I'm listening to it and I'm just kind of getting into it and then they sneak this note in there and it makes you go, oh, <laughs> it's like a, what? And obviously it's not a mistake, they repeated it a few times, and, you know, sometimes in the world of recording and stuff, you leave a little noogie in there for, you know, <laughs> so you go, wake up call. Anyhow, uh, this was Isis Ghost Key. Uh, thank you so much for hanging in there for those of you who wanted me to do Isis, and I'm just now doing it for the first time. 
Please suggest more uh, in the comments. I want to thank you for hanging out. This was a long video. I do have one more track coming today, though. So I have one in uh, probably by 12, 1 o'clock today. Uh, so anyhow, um, you guys have a wonderful day. And thanks for hanging out. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe, uh, always stay happy, and always stay plugged in. Okay, remember, want to buy me a cup of coffee? Links for everything, coffee, headsets, Patreon, and the Spotify for ISIS will be down below. You guys have a great day. Aloha. Yeah! All right.